Good morning and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you are doing good today. It's twenty second December, Saturday today. Let's talk about poverty. Lack of money is the root cause of all evil. Think about lack of education. When I say education, I'm talking about quality education. Uh, then we see this many diseases, this chaos, uh, so many people dying on a regular basis, air pollution, all these things, right? They all these things took birth. from this thing called poverty and poverty is an ideology we have to get rid of this ideology for a very long period of time our culture has uh, given a sort of prime place uh, to to uh, poverty by staying away from materialistic world i'm not saying that we should just focus on materialistic world we need a fine balance of course we need a bit of spiritualism we need a bit of our indian culture at the same time we also need a touch of economics a touch of materialism so think about it i will leave it on you guys with this difference our pen drive and tablet courses are available for various different exams at present big christmas sale is going on you are getting flat 60% off to find out more about it do check out studyiq.com we have demo lectures for you guys and if you have any question or queries you can feel free and give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen mind you 25th december is the last date for this big christmas sale don't wait for christmas get your pen drive and tablet course today itself now today we have uh, three articles on our table today is saturday so we don't have that many seven or eight articles to go through and uh, today we have just three articles that are important for your examination so first one is going to be this one right uh, if you can identify this flag then i'm i'm sure many of you have got it right because few days ago we were talking about this country and today we find this island hopping that is written by rajiv bhatia who is an ex diplomat right so it's a very interesting see whenever an article is written by an ex diplomat you find a touch of practicality you find a touch of uh, experience in this sort of articles now a few days ago we were talking about this maldives so i'm not going to repeat all those things that we have already discussed if it is your first day in today's discussion then get in touch with your friends uh, who are regular in writing comments and posting their answers get in touch with them they will help you and they will provide you dates uh, it's been not even a week that we have discussed this maldives uh, so check out this week's a uh, few editorials and you will come across our previous discussion on maldives so basic things about it right it's an archipelago made up of tiny islands it's a tiny island nation again and uh, abdullah yamin uh, was ruling this country for nearly 5 years and uh, his rule is termed as authoritarianism right uh, he was uh, single handedly controlling everything even supreme court uh, judge was uh, sent behind bar uh, ex presidents were treated very badly opposition parties were crushed and opposition leaders were uh, you know kept in exile and this sort of anarchy sort of thing was going on uh, in this 5 years of abdullah yamin we can say that uh, maldives was on paper a democratic country but on ground it was not a democratic country it was more like a dictatorship now the things have changed in recent past we saw this election took place in maldives and we have new president called mr soli and his first visit abroad is of course new delhi so now things have changed under yamin stenyo things were very bad relationship between india and maldives were at its worst and uh, you know things were not going right uh, mr modi never visited maldives uh, when yamin was there uh, this was the only country in our neighborhood where mr modi has not been uh, he has been to pakistan as well uh, but he has not been here to maldives so you can understand how bad the relationship were but now things have changed and uh, both the nations are trying their level best to, to cement this ties and whatever cracks uh, that were developed in this yamin's tenure because there were few things uh, that were not acceptable to india at all right uh, for example wahhabism wahhabism is an ideology that is more i would say more radical ideology it is you know being bit more aggressive and it's negative in the sense it is it is promoting radicalization in various different parts of the world 
and uh, for India it's a matter of concern because uh, when a country that is not far from our country our neighboring country and its youngsters are joining ISIS because of Wahhabism then that's a red flag for our country uh, then Saudi Ar uh, Saudi Arabia uh, you know purchasing or this plan of Saudi Arabia to purchase islands uh, from this atolls from Maldives and uh, Yemen's government ready to lease and sell these islands uh, to Saudi Arabia now, that was again uh, a red flag for our country China China is building what was trying to build uh, naval bases here and this naval bases were a dual purpose naval base right you can use it for merchant navy that is your commercial purpose at the same time it can be used for your military or defense purpose as well so this thing again is a red flag for our country china has some uh, seven eight nuclear submarines and out of uh, this seven eight you find one or two three are loitering here in this indian ocean so this is again a, a, it's a matter of concern for our country and when a particular government or a neighboring country is providing a sort of platform uh, to this uh, this sort of uh, stance of China then that is of course going to create a sort of uh, you can say trouble or it is going to deteriorate your relationship with India now they have changed and now uh, this new government is talking about India first policy that's a good news for us and Mr. Soli has uh, openly said this thing that our closest neighbor not in terms of geography, in terms of heart to heart, in terms of diplomatic relationship, it is Maldives. And Prime Minister Modi was the only head of government present at Mr. Soli's inauguration. So this indicates that this uh, statements, uh, this uh, new policy, uh, this handshakes, you know, this presence of uh, uh, Mr. Modi uh, during the swearing in ceremony, uh, presence of uh, Mr. Soli in our country interacting with our prime minister our president and reassuring our country all these things are clear indication that now things have changed forever and Maldives is uh, you know going through a bit of uh, crunch financial crunch so in the sense like it has got a little bit of depth and things were not right there were few people who were becoming very rich so now India has decided to to assist Maldives with 1.4 billion dollar package now observe this package right this package will be used in four areas the first is healthcare education water and sanitation you'll be thinking that uh, that's fine but if you read between the lines right here then you find that when we are just imagine in your city if you find a particular country like USA or maybe France or maybe any other country has uh, helped our nation and if they have created uh, houses for poor people if they have created uh, uh, drinking water facilities uh, if they have like when we read this news that Netherlands is going to help us in uh, cleaning Ganga uh, this England is going to help us in cleaning Ganga because they have this experience with uh, Thames as well and uh, when it comes to education if we find that free education books and uniforms and so many other things schools and teachers and this sort of programs I've been run in our country in various different pockets by various different countries then we feel the people of that region right they will have a special corner for that country right so India is if you, if you look at the strength of India when it comes to international or bilateral relationship it is not the hard power it's not the weaponry it is not our helicopters or aircrafts or other things that we provide it is this sort of soft help that we do in human development like healthcare, education, water, sanitation. These things are our expertise like China. China is expert in construction. It will construct ports for you. It will construct this and that for you. But when it comes to, you know, heart to heart relationship, then China is not that even today, right? Having this deep pocket, uh, we don't have... Uh, that deep pocket means we don't have that much money that we can throw around uh, just like China but we have a good reputation we allow our partners to select their projects we don't we don't force projects on them we don't ask them to to build schools and then we don't uh, push our construction companies over there we don't do that thing right we allow them to decide and if they said that they want to work in school and education and this and that they say okay if it 
looks okay with us, if we are fine with it, then we'll just give money. Many times what happens, like foreign minister of Bangladesh, when he was here, I think it's been it's been a year or so uh, when he was here. I mean, I, I'm not sure whether he's been here in between, but I can still remember somewhere around a year ago when he was here. He said this thing that we are getting money from uh, from China as well and we are getting money from India too. But there is a difference when we get money from China and when we get money from or help or assistance from China or India. With China, they will give us a project. They will tell us what to do, what not to do, how much you need to spend here, this and that. With India, they will give us money and they will say that you can democratically, your country, your government can decide what you want to do with that money. So this is uh, the soft power of India, right? And this is intangible. This is something that has stayed with us, right? Look at so many African countries. They have huge amount of respect for our country because we have helped them. We have created this soft power. So now we are going to support Maldives so that they can come back to, they can rejoin this Commonwealth. They can get an entry into this Indian Ocean Rim Association Four agreements have been signed between both the nations like agribusiness, uh, visa agreement, uh, information technology, culture. This visa agreement thing is a bit interesting because now the president of Maldives, uh, Mr. Soli, is inviting Indian businesses to come and do business in Maldives. He has used the word again. He said that uh, Maldives is open again for business. Uh, that means things were bad during Yamin's or investment went out from Maldives, right? Uh, but now we can invest over there. So that's a good thing. Uh, Maldives assurance, as far as our security scenario is concerned, it has assured that uh, it is fully aware and sensitive about India's security and strategic concerns. Of course, uh, it is talking about China. And we cannot expect, we are not saying that there should not be any sort of relationship between Maldives and China. That's that never happens in international relationship, right? You have to, if you are if you are getting closer to India, that does not mean that you will stop talking with China. So it's 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 the countries or it's diplomacy that we are talking about. But uh, this statement is enough, right? It's a reassuring statement and uh, maritime security. We are going to conduct now coordinated patrolling, aerial surveillance, capacity building and all these things. And remember back in 2015, our Prime Minister came out with this uh, uh, this uh, tagline or, or this word called SAGAR. SAGAR stands for security and growth for all in the region. When I say all in the region, we are talking about all the nations. Uh, those nations who are sharing its border with Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean is... Uh, IMP uh, for our country, right? And uh, we don't want to see disturbances here. We don't want to see, uh, you can say, anarchy here. We want each and every nation, right? And extra regional, you can say, parties like uh, China is not a country that is direct uh, sharing its border with India. Uh, I beg your pardon, with Indian Ocean. But when it is misbehaving here and if it is creating naval bases here and there, so that's a red flag for all the nations here. We don't want to see these sort of things here. So the good thing is our soft power is working. We have Quad as well. We have talked about Quad. So Australia is again a major player over here. The next big player that I can see here is uh, South Africa. And on 26th January 2019, South African president is going to be our special guest uh, so uh, it's been you know this thing is in the air that uh, during this visit of South Ara South African president uh, we are going to talk about this maritime security so that's going to be a main focus point that's what uh, that's what we can feel that's uh, at present but still we have to wait and watch now a couple of uh, a week ago or something there was this first a blue economy conference beg your pardon let me rewrite it for you so this is kenya here as you can see right nairobi mombasa these are two big cities and uh, kenya held this uh, first global blue economy 
conference. Uh, it was held here in Kenya. And now Kenya is, uh, is a bit happy or it's a bit enthusiastic to join this maritime, uh, you can say, security with uh, India. It wants to make India partner. So we have a few friends here. Uh, we already have Sri Lanka. We have uh, uh, Seychelles. We have Mauritius. Uh, then we have France here. Reunion Island and other islands of France are just here. So we have good friends here. So uh, we have things in our side as far as this maritime security in Indian Ocean is concerned. I have an infographic for you guys. Uh, I must note here that uh, uh, this one, this infographic is a bit old, right? A couple of years old, but this will help you why it is important. You have some 11 points here. So go through this 11 points. Uh, I'll leave it on you guys. This is a sort of homework for you. And this will give you a bit more add-on on this Indian Ocean. Now let's talk about uh, topic number two, that is move fast and fix things. Uh, move fast and fix things is about Facebook, it is about data protection, it is about uh, privacy and misuse of data that has been done by big names like Facebook. Fi Facebook was, you know, Facebook even today is important for so many of us. But Facebook is getting more and more infamous uh, for uh, privacy breaches, uh, for misinformation campaigns and also meddling with the election processes of major democracies. Remember this case of Cambridge Analytica back in 2018, uh, beg your pardon, back in March 2018 uh, to be precise. Uh, this Cambridge Analytica was in news of what it did. It uh, collected data from uh, this Facebook users and then it used this data to, to analyze people. When I say analyze people, it's about, you know, psychological analysis of your personality. And then, based on that result, uh, but this Cambridge Analytica has provided this information to political parties or its so-called clients, right? Uh, so clients pay a huge amount of money to companies like Cambridge Analytica. They will go through your FB profile and they will somehow collect your data and then they will process this data into their softwares and then they will have this I would say, what do we say, that horoscope or kundlis, right? They have the, your kundli. So based on this, your horoscope, not literal horoscope, I'm talking about your personality analysis. Based on that thing, they will design advertisement. So if you like, uh, if you like to eat sweets every Saturday evening and if you go out for a party every Saturday evening and if you have like one crore people in our country going out, uh, you know, Saturday evening, then based on that thing, uh, this Cambridge Analytica will, you know, because on Facebook and other places, what we do, we share our location. We say that we went here and we like to eat that and this and that. So based on all these tiny details, uh, which we don't realize, right, uh, the importance of this uh, data and uh, detail, because in today's world, data is also considered as uh, as new oil or it is considered as oil. It is equivalent to oil. If you have data, then you can. You have softwares and based on this you can design your advertisement and this will help you with more sales and if you are a politician or political party it will fetch you more votes so that's what cambridge analytica did um, uh, in usa and in other countries as well and uh, the new york times uh, has got a new report out and as per new york times new york times is a big name in in, in this media world so as per New York Times, the top management of Facebook was was having this knowledge about this sharing of user data with Cambridge Analytica and other other companies like uh, CA or Cambridge Analytica. Now, Indian civil society activists had fought against uh, Facebook uh, very publicly on net neutrality. On your screen, you can see this logo here. This logo is of uh, free basics i'm not sure how many of you are aware about this thing uh, I'm, I'm i'm sure we have few old students when i say older i mean to see that there are a few students who ha have been following this uh, series uh, for a very long period of time now so remember uh, dear friends uh, that we have talked about this uh, free basics earlier on it's about net neutrality so how it works is you have a picture on your screen this is scenario of a highway uh, where every car is free to use whichever lane they, they feel is good for them. So based on your car, based on your driving ability, your speed will, you know, you will get a, a proper runway or a proper highway or a freeway. And based on this, you know, you can drive your car or your vehicle. 
But when we are talking about free basics, what this Facebook was trying to tell, Facebook said that they are going to provide internet for free to poor people in poor region of the world. Because even today, uh, just a few days ago, I was talking with uh, uh, with the students who are following PIB analysis, right, in Press Information Bureau analysis, uh, at present, 51% uh, of global population is using internet. So even today, 51% population is not having access to internet. So there is a big, big, big market waiting out there, right? Uncharted Sea is waiting for big companies. And what Facebook was trying to do under this under the name of free basics like it will provide internet for free but then uh, the catch here is that large companies will pay money to Facebook and the small companies of course they cannot match uh, the money that will be paid by this large company so what will happen is when you are trying to open a website of a small company that has not paid any money to Facebook under this free basics you will be directed towards that company that company say for example if you are looking for a car so if you are a small company right an, an Indian company that is not that big in global platform if you're trying to open a website if you're looking for a hatchback or SUV or something it will direct you to big names only because big names have played uh, uh, beg your pardon, paid a huge amount of money to this uh, Facebook so Facebook was trying to become a gatekeeper it was trying to take away this democracy that we find with internet internet is open isn't it for everyone so this thing was rejected by Indian civil society and luckily or you can say uh, we, you know fortunately our government has as well was against uh, this free basics idea of of Facebook now what Facebook is doing is it is acquiring various different companies now we know that uh, whatsapp has been acquired by Facebook and uh, they have these terms and conditions so all all the things right private chats or this data that we are using everything is collected and uh, this is shared with facebook so still we don't have this clarity on this thing that what exactly facebook is doing with this data but uh, it is collecting or it is holding huge amount of data with it because uh, that's that's what uh, the their terms and conditions are with various different companies and in August 2017 we got this judgment called right to privacy just a few days ago I was talking about this uh, data protection how we can get how we can make sure that we can protect our our people from this data theft and things the best way is data localization there are a few issues with data localization it is it is going to be expensive but in long term it is going to protect us as well it can there are there are countries out there like USA and there are other countries like USA predominantly storing all this this big five companies Facebook and Google all these companies are from USA and uh, do you know that they have this act in USA and as per that local act of USA if the government is if government wants something from Facebook like a data about any particular country or region or an individual it can easily get and Facebook has to provide it no matter what terms and policies it has with us with you and I Facebook will provide it because under USA law it is obliged to provide this data to USA or government so our data is not safe and uh, look at uh, Justice B and uh, Sri Krishna committee we find faults with uh, that as well there are a few things uh, that are not right with this B and Sri Krishna committee still we don't know what government is doing about it uh, ministry uh, wrote to Facebook explaining this Cambridge Analytica thing or you know asking to explain this Cambridge Analytica thing parliamentary standing committee and the Central Bureau of Investigation uh, investigating this in September 2018 CBI started investigating this FB and Cambridge Analytica case parliamentary standing committee on IT uh, was formed and uh, its result is still it's not that clear uh, in front of a local uh, local audience or local people and DNA technology which we were talking about yesterday remember so we are trying to bring more laws and all these things uh, this DNA technology if we have then if we are using servers that are located in USA then our data will be misused so what we need in our country we need up-to-date laws right uh, most of the things are controlled by this IT Act of 2000 
what we were in 2000 or what the world was in 2000 and what the world is in 2018 or 2019 is altogether different there is a drastic change right so it has metamorphosized if we talk about internet so we need up to date laws we need the best laws uh, there are so many things that we can learn from european union and until and unless we don't have this protective laws right uh, then we are not going to save ourselves from this misuse by big this by this big giants now the last one is controversial exit this is about usa mr trump has decided to pull troops the usa's troops out of this country called syria now syria you can see here this is damascus damascus is its capital syria is again victim of this uh, big game that is going on between saudi arabia and iran and saudi arabia is not happy with the government of uh, syria uh, that is bashar al assad's regime because he's supported by iran and uh, usa is not happy with iran so usa is not happy with bashar al assad so this is a big background picture that is going on over here now uh, big news coming from usa that uh, defense minister or over there they call secretary of defense uh, james mattis has resigned from his post because he was not happy with this decision of mr trump to pull out troops from syria and uh, 2000 troops are there in syria they are not there you know uh, they are basically supporting Uh, the kurdish rebels now kurdish rebels are against the government of uh, syria uh, but they are supported by us and they played a very important role in hunting down isis people so kurdish force has played a very important role and you can see here there was a time when 95% of this uh, syria was under control of uh, not 95% but 95% of territory that isis used to have under its control now it is just holding 5% so there was a big portion right big cities and other places they were directly under control of isis but today uh, you know it's nearly gone uh, and one of the most important role played as i told you is this kurdish people you can see here kurdish people area is here then they are this is border area so you have a uh, border area of turkey you find kurdish people and you have this demand of kurdistan going on there was a referendum when you ago uh one one and a half year ago uh, in this country iraq so turkey is not happy with this thing Tur- what for turkey uh, this referendum and this kurdish people is a big threat because in future if they have their own country called kurdistan then they will demand this kurdish people living nearby the border of turkey they will start asking for this area here they will start a- asking for uh for independence or joining this portion of turkey with kurdistan and this can create problem and in fact uh, turkey's government uh, calls or it uh, has declared kurdish people or this kurdish rebels as terrorists uh, so this is again creating problems right so usa is supporting kurdish people turkey is attacking them and if uh, usa is going out then there will be a bit of war between turkish people uh, turkish army and kurdish people and then isis can uh, benefit out of this war between two rivals so it's going to be let's wait and watch now so this are this is a big picture that i have provided to you guys now let's go through some news items uh, 22 accused in this sorabuddin encounter case are uh, set free and judge has expressed uh, that uh, what can a judge do if the witnesses are turned are turning hostile if the witnesses if you don't have substantial evidence because courts they work on very technical thing so if you don't have proper evidence then judge cannot what you sentence can arunachal's tallest tree build a road this one is about adi adi is a tribal community that you find in siang district of arunachal pradesh and uh, this is a small news item that you find it's about tree and bird watching but the mo- most important thing is this com- name of community and where do you find them because uh, there you find this type of questions every year in your mcq vyanka wants members and uh, ls panel that is lok sabha panel has advised that if uh, if a, a member uh, is misbehaving then uh, he or she can be automatically suspended uh, from the house so let's hope that this thing is applied because from last 8 days right uh, this rajya sabha has not performed and uh, india reminds china of peace because a foreign minister of china was here in our country and uae is going to deposit 3 billion dollar in pakistan's central bank uh, to help them with their liquidity crunch 
Niti Aayog has came out with this report on goals, uh, this SDGs, that is Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, when it comes to UN, then there are 17 Sustainable Development Goals. But here, Niti Aayog is just taking 13, uh, right? Uh, so just keep this thing in mind that when it comes to Niti Aayog, it is going through or it is taking 13 SDGs into consideration. And uh, the more... You can see figures here like 69, Kerala and Himachal Pradesh. Uh, so they have achieved, uh, you can say, reasonable success when it comes to SDGs. There's 13 SDGs, SDGs. And then you have Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Odisha. They have not performed that well. And on your screen, you can see an orangutan. Its name is uh, Albino Orangutan. And where do you find this Albino? You find them in Borneo, right? That is in indonesia so remember this uh, information and uh, this are your vocabs today the question is again based on south america and today you have to arrange capitals of south american countries from north to south and uh, this is your question uh, go through it and uh, download the pdf of today's lecture from my fb page as well as twitter handle if you have learned something from today's discussion then don't forget to share this lecture with other students and uh, tomorrow is sunday so i'll bring out a special topic for you guys for Sunday. So that's everything in today's uh, discussion. Enjoy your day. I'll see you soon. God bless you all. Jai Hind.